Welcome to the Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Heavens of Sorcery. Once again, we're going to be getting into all sorts of crazy magical shenanigans. Um, I've got I've got too much on my list, though I think we'll get through most of it really quickly, except for the Terra Steel. That's just that's more a long term goal. But <laughs> we are going to be working on a few things here. And if I peek at the advancements tab, I can see what potentially could be the end of the pack as we know it could be. I mean, I don't really know because as I start unlocking things, more things might pop up. But I think this is where it is. Because, I mean, looking at this one, it's one page. It's one page. This looks like it's kind of stretching out to one page. I don't think that it's really going to be much more. That does not mean that the pack is at its end. It just means that that is potentially the end of season one of this pack. Because uh, I know that the Phoenix Lodge is working hard on trying to, you know, get this pack completely finished for everyone to, you know, do a full playthrough of it instead of just, you know, just ending at chapter four. Chapter five is a lot more complex, probably. I would I would assume chapter five is just as complex as all of the first four chapters combined, minus the initial setup. Um, because, you know, once you get to the end game, you have everything as an option, you know? So you gotta try and plan for things. But I've got so much going on. Uh, let's, let's start with grabbing some of these here, just because these are going to be my herb, herb? whatever you want to call them, ingredients. And I've got all these little, little packs. Look, I made a magic one, utility, study in animals, and tools. And of course, it's going to store all these in there. I don't want the Pereskia bulbs for now. They're, they're a good food source, but not, not at this point when I've got cooked venison. But I mean, I've got like all my wands in here, plus my magic stuff. I've got my utility going on here, uh, which, you know, just more or less basic stuff. And I've got an, even an extra slot now. I've got my study in animals, which has all of my building gadgets templates, uh, plus the Tome of Transference, Kashik Tome, a couple slots for books that I plan on filling up today, and a, a few animal things, you know, one, a rat flute, a lead, a saddle, and so on. And then tools, basically my tools. <laughs> it's pretty basic, but it's really nice. And each one of these also has uh, herb slots, but I'm still going to, you know, try and just fill this one. Hopefully upgrade this one because I still have another magic wand that I can fit in here um, to the next one. And I think that that's next on our list of things to progress with if I'm to follow the quest book. But but you know me, I, I get distracted easily, so I'm not necessarily going to do that. Also, uh, I maxed out my level. Level 15 is the highest that I'm aware of. Uh, I no longer gain XP, and I ended up skipping dodge in favor of getting vitality and stalwart packed uh, and... Uh, yeah, pretty much those two, because uh, you have to take so many points in each one to get to the next level. I skipped this one, select a focus. That's really good for multiplayer. I'm not playing multiplayer, so that, that makes sense there. Invoke Mass, again, good for multiplayer. I'm not playing multiplayer. This one here, Dodge 5, another 5% dodge bonus. Eh, I'd rather get, you know, 5 extra hearts of max health while holding a shield in my offhand. Yes, please. And this one here, Stalwart Pact. Which, if I look at the spell book, there it is. Upon reaching half or less health, you're granted with Absorption 3 and Regeneration 3. Can be cast on yourself or a target. And that's awesome. Uh, as I don't have any other targets, it will always be cast on myself. Yay! So that's a thing. I don't plan on automating the Radiant Resonators. Uh, I've had some people comment that they want me to automate that. I don't really need that much for the Raw Radiant Quartz. It's just been something I've been picking up on occasion. But this, on the other hand... I could easily automate this, but I think instead I'll just make it much easier to manually change. Um, and with that, we're going to do a few of the books. Uh, I believe uh, I've mentioned these in the past, the Tome of Building, Tome of Exchanging, Tome of Destruction. Uh, I think I'm going to do the Tome of Destruction first because that doesn't require anything really fancy here. I'll click Cast. And then that'll be another thing for my what is it, Study in Animals book, which... Yeah, I just got it. So this will just straight up destroy stuff, uh, which will be very useful for just, you know, mining, perhaps, in the uh, the Misty World. I could just, you know, destroy stuff until I find a block, or I see a block, and then I mine that. So that could be really, really quick. good. Um, I don't think that these actually have any, like, charge. I think that they're, like, you could just use them as often as you want. I mean, that that's pretty much what we did with the template manager and stuff. So, I mean, I'm just kind of speculating here. But I'm going to keep a slot open for the Tome of Exchanging. Yes, this one. But first, we're going to need a conversion wand from Astral Sorcery, Sorcery to make one of those. 
and then that will help me to just kind of manually replace a few things. So let's get over to the Misty Astral Altars. And here we go. We are here now. You'll notice that I have a Celestial Collector Crystal just kind of sitting here waiting, ready. If I look here, you can see we've got some stuff. Let's place this thing a little bit more appropriately. I built this little section, this thing over here to to uh, specifically place on this location. Put this up here. Come on. There we go. And then I grab this. Oh, look at that. And now this is still doing fine, but I need to get my magic linking tool. And it should, if I link here to the to, to here, there we go. It will shine on the table and pow. <laughs> Even during the daytime, it's probably going to be at least this much, which is really, really strong. Yes, I has a strong device going on here. And yes, I can I can build more of them and stuff. I have other ingredients around here for future use. I'm not going to be doing them yet. I figure I will be doing this to switch out my um, astral sorcery effects. Um, you know, uh, currently how I've got like all the different like bonuses to XP and stuff. I will be using it to switch out my levels for something more appropriate once I have set up maybe the uh, the Gaia Guardian fights and start going through those a bunch because I know I'll probably get a whole bunch of XP just fighting the Gaia Guardian and the mobs from that. Or at least I hope to. Um, oh shoot, I forgot. I am, I am not invisible right now. Let's put the invisibility cloak on to prevent dudes like that from getting over to me. Get out of here. <laughs> They're a lot simpler now that I've got the uh, Angel of Vengeance bonuses going on. But let me grab my magics. I want my wand. Stat, there it is, resonating wand. I'm going to put this one away and tap on here. We can get the other wand. <laughs> but we're going to use that to craft stuff. So, oops, I just closed it. I've got so many bags now, but at least they're they're named. It'd be really nice if I could actually like change how they look. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. So, now that that's set, Let's head back. Be right, be right there. Okay, and with this, I should be able to toss in this, this, cast. And if you're not familiar with the Astro Sorcery Exchanging Wand, it's really cool. It, it is definitely worthwhile in itself, but I feel that, you know, this is just more thematic for, for keeping it in my study and animals section. But the idea here, is it is it G? Yeah, G is the default key, I believe. You can exchange blocks, and I want surface so therefore we're going to do a range of two that should be enough to exchange oh right and i also need to place something down so let me grab swampy poplar wood no i want cobblestone that's what i want uh, i'm going to put one of these down put this back up here because i don't want it to do this and then i'm going to sneak right click there we go yeah i'm going to need this to be a little bit bigger so let's press G. We're going to go a range of three. That's still not enough. G, four. There we go. So now, which actually I might be able to do it with all of them. Let's let's see if I can increase this range to ten. Or do they have to be connected? I don't know. I think they have to be connected. So what I can do is I could potentially... Uh, I've got an idea here. This is, I'm just planning on making a bunch of living rock. I just thought I'd mess around with this a little bit. There we go. <laughs> now they're connected. So now if I take this tome and I aim at the living rock, I can exchange just the living rock for cobblestone that needs to be changed out. Oh, I guess that doesn't work, but it's all right. What I'm going to do is probably change this back down to a shorter range of maybe like six or seven. I think, I think six might have done it. I think so. Yeah, uh, I'm guessing it does. It looks like it's more than big enough for this. And I can just exchange these as I want, and I can always switch them out. What I probably need to do to make it easier on myself is... Uh oh. <laughs> that that didn't work. Let, let me try mining up this piece here. Hold on. There we go. Is Put one of these down. And make it easier on myself. Put one of these down. And yes, this is still making it manual. I mean, it just makes it simpler. So all I need to do is sneak click on this or this. Those are going to be the results. Those aren't what I want. I want these. 
Yes, there we go. I had it backwards. Had it back to front. Let's put that there. That there. And then I can put some of these back. So then the idea here is that I can take the tome of exchange. I can get this, folks. Just, just bear with me for a second. And I can sneak click on the one that I want to exchange this stuff with. Like this. And if I had any in my inventory, I'd be able to exchange everything here. Yay, just like that. And then I can do this and exchange everything here. Cool, right? And then I only get as much as I really need. I don't have to worry about it too much. And I can always keep on exchanging these and no worries. All right, that works much better. <laughs> I just need to put this stuff away now. All right, so enough of me being derpy about the books. <laughs> Those will be very useful in the future. I also have a piece of cobblestone. Get out of here. Um, let's try and clean things up a bit. You might have noticed that I've got a few things going on. One, um, simply, I've got a whole lot of extra health. That's that's primarily from the five extra hearts from uh, Angels of Vengeance Paladin. So I've, I've got two rows plus two hearts. I've got a lot of health right now. Um, another thing is that I've got these monitoring crystals on a whole bunch of inventories as well as a bunch of radiant chests. I didn't switch out everything. Obviously, the uh, the shulker boxes uh, cannot be read by monitoring crystals. If you're curious what these are, I need to first craft a little something. So uh, let's. Oh, right. I forgot. I also need to make an item vacuum. I'll do that in a moment here. Um, but let's clear that out. And I need to make a manifest from Arcane Archives. This requires paper. Uh, some kind of iridescent shard or ink sack or something that represents black uh, ink or dye. Radiant dust times two, which I actually need to make another set of radiant dust because I want two manifests. Uh, one for me and one for crafting. And I think the one for crafting is so that I can actually make the, the stand. Yep, yeah, which I think I make out here. So that's where these extra bits in my inventory come from. Uh, let's see, the inventory, there it is, the recipe. We have it. The Manifest Lectern. These two items are the same. Uh, the, the Manifest and the Manifest Lectern. Essentially, the Manifest will allow me to see all the items in all of the chests that are radiant, or anything Arcane, Arcane Archives. All of those, plus this Gem Cutters Table inventory, anything like that. Plus, anything that is linked with one of these things, a monitoring crystal. Which, if you look over here, I've got some on the backs of these chests. I don't even know if it, it'll read one or the other or both. I just, I made some extras and I put them on there. So now you can see I've got all of my inventory here minus the shulker boxes because these are actually entities um, and the, or, or tile entities. And they, they don't, I don't know if they're entities or tile entities, but they don't accept the, um, the, these here, the, the rate, the monitoring crystals. So therefore it won't accept that, but that's, that's fine because I know specifically some of these have extra stuff in them, you know, like my uh, rustic stuff, uh, etc. And I don't have anything on like my furnace because I don't need to know how much charcoal is in there or, or this weird what's it chest. I mean, it's not really important stuff, but I, I have it here. I probably should distribute this back into some of the other chests. But I also have some of these that are really huge chests that are even bigger than the Arcane Archives ones. They don't stack four times in a single slot, but when you've got a large variety of blocks, it makes it even better. So therefore, having the uh, monitoring crystal on the back works. Now, the Manifest Lectern is the same thing, but I can place it down so I don't have to have a manifest in my inventory. So I can just walk up and I can click on this and I can check things. And you can also, you know, uh, monitor and change things around. So you can have this. Um, bra braziers, I don't know how you want to pronounce it, but it's up to you, um, of hoarding can insert any item into this radiant chest. And then you can check mark this or not. And you can have it so that when you drop things into this little fiery looking thing, uh, let me look it up here, uh, this, uh, which usually it's lit once you've placed it down. Uh, you play, you toss items into it and they'll automatically go into the appropriate location that already has something in there. If you already have, you know, uh, can only insert items that this radiant chest already contains. That's what I want right there. So therefore, it will not, uh, it, it won't just dump random stuff in there. So you, you can, you know, switch things around. You can also search in here. Uh, we can look for um, touch. I don't actually, I don't think that this is going to work like that. Uh, I thought this was a search for other stuff. Let's look at molten. You know what? That doesn't really matter. It, it it works either way, so that you can have things go all in there. I need to make a torch. 
or uh, one of those braziers, which actually I should probably put on my list, but that's so it requires a rune of summer or a rune of fire. This is more like a longer term goal right now. I could spend an episode probably making this thing because I rune of summer requires air and earth and quick soil. And, yeah, you get the idea. I'll probably do that between episodes or something. Uh, but I can make one of these, put it down, and then I can just toss a whole bunch of my inventory in there. And anything left can go into like an empty chest, like this one here. Oh, no, wait. That one does have stuff. I guess I need to make an empty chest because I don't think I have one that actually contains you know just nothing or random things because this one i have like dyes and wools hmm i could probably make another one <laughs> wouldn't be that bar that bad but the manifest does the same thing as that lectern as i was saying so therefore it's a portable way of doing it and i figure i can put this in my study pouch here oh boy maybe i do put it in here and i keep the the rats one because i don't have any rats in the meantime I could just put it in with my uh, weapons and tools chest for now. There we go. And then I was thinking I could take this item vacuum. And I could put it on the back of this. Like that. And then <laughs> it should go a pretty decent distance for any kind of things like this. Hopefully. Unless it requires uh, it to be turned on. I can't remember. Let's find out. Yeah, it's not sucking anything up, so I need to have levers on this thing. Let me go grab some levers. I can never have enough of these things, but I'm glad I made so many as I did. <laughs> I really am, actually. I've got 67 of them, but I, I have no regrets. So let's try putting this up here. Turn that on. And then I toss it. Oh, there we go. And then it's going to pull the stuff over here and, and not pick it up. I'm going to need to fix that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to need an item pipe, at least one item pipe, for that to go through. I don't think that it needs an extractor for it. I think it should be alright. Let me grab a couple, a few of these, just in case. And then I can try setting this up so it goes across here and suctions onto there, which is probably going to be better anyway. But let's try this. We'll put one here, there, and then this. And that should help me to avoid picking up some of these iron berries and stuff. Oh, I need to put the, the lever back on top. I forgot about that. Okay. Lever. Go. And then we toss this. And I didn't even look to see if this stuff goes in. 27. Let's, let's try it again. Take half those. Okay, it just grabbed them straight away. And they're back in. Alright, it does work. Perfect. I just don't like how this lever is facing. So... We're going to fix that. I'm going to stand up here. There we go. That's a little bit better. And then I can toss this down. Now, if I walk uh, through there at the same moment that one of these things falls down, that's one thing. Uh, but what I am curious about is how far away... Let's actually use the seeds. How far away this goes. I think it goes a pretty decent distance. I don't think it's going to get all the way to the other side here, though. No, it doesn't. But... Yeah, it gets all the way up to the edge here, which is perfect. I mean, honestly, I, I, I'm i pretty happy about that. It still doesn't want to grab everything. <laughs> Maybe I put a slab under there. Well, do you think that that'll work? Well, yeah, place your bets, folks. Will a slab underneath help it to elevate these items up high enough that it'll grab them automatically? Uh, in fact, it might have already picked them up. That might have been a conflict with my... Uh, with with my ring of magnetization but let's try this we're going to throw a bunch of these down now it still looks like they're there they like they get stuck I don't know if this is a good thing oh wait they disappeared okay I still think it works I think it just takes a, a moment longer so I guess it's not the perfect solution but it does seem to work I could probably have it down at ground level and then it'll pick it up for sure, but eh. It's a start, right? Just a little bit of quality of life for me so that I don't need to worry about it so much. <laughs> Hopefully. We'll put those back in there. We'll put my ring of magnetization back on and hope that I don't pick up those iron berry seeds and, and berries all the time, hopefully. Uh, but we've got the conversion wand done. We've got the... Uh, I'll leave the, bra the brazier on there for now. Tome of Destruction, Tome of Exchanging. We need to continue with all sorts of stuff on 
on the quest lines. I think that this is a really good idea because I also noticed that there are some new um, uh, dimensions on the horizon as well. Which, by the way, I made another uh, munch do, but I put it down on a piece of regular uh, ground or grass uh, or dirt, and then I turned that into grass, and then I <laughs> enhanced it with one of those, um, what do you call it, uh, these, the overgrowth seeds, so that it would do stuff. I also tossed in a bunch more uh, charcoal because I'm, I think I made some terra steel. Didn't I make some terra steel? I swear I made some. Yeah, I did. There we go. I've got five already made. You don't need a lot of terra steel to make uh, terra steel armor. If you look, it's mostly mana steel, which, um, if you notice, I have a mana steel set of armor over here in preparation because I'm I'm getting closer. Basically, each set of armor requires a different rune plus three ingots. So I've been making a little bit of it. Uh, I actually kind of left this AFK for a while. I <laughs> I went out for like the day and came back, and yeah, all the pools were full. And this is before I even had the charcoal thing going. This is just for extra bonus uh, mana right now to get it back up. But <laughs> it's going well. So it won't be long before I end up having some terra steel armor. I'll probably, like before, I was thinking I would leave the um, the the wings. Hmm. I I'm probably still going to wear the wings here and keep the chest plate in the cosmetic armor slot like this one. And use it when I need to. Because I really... I really don't want those wings to get wasted, and for them to be mending, I need them to be on me. So, I'll work on that. Anyway, let's go into some quests. Uh, Tome of Exchanging. Yes, we did this. Conversion Wand. We did that. Those are those are done. Tome of Destruction. Yep, We have. I'm not doing the building one yet. Uh, I, I've got a Formation Wand I still need to make for that and so on, but we can go into Arcanus Magics. Fey and Far Between. Those ancient saplings have other uses too. Most importantly for now is in the creation of the Grove Supplication Spell Dust, which actually, yeah, the these ancient saplings, you, you knock one down, you actually get new seeds. Oh, and there's the freaking iron berries. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you know what I mean. There we go. Uh, it's been a while since I, I've, you know, had a little bit passed out. Let, let's just get rid of that. That's going to come back to me. I know it. But um, I knocked one down in the back over there. Uh, yep, there it is. Psh, get out of here. This one's growing up again, but I got a whole bunch more seeds from it. And these are fabulous. You only really need one. They don't actually increase the aura. What they will do is keep it at neutral. So your aura will be at like a, a, a passive zero with these nearby because they will degrade some of the leaves and then they'll grow new ones. Uh, if it's not dynamic trees, then you'll probably have to keep on remaking these things. So I'm glad that these are these are dynamic trees so that they can constantly keep it at zero in this area that I have going on um, for, you know, kind of making stuff. Which, by the way, I put a lid on here. I wanted it to be a bit more thematic. It looks kind of like a toilet to me, though. <laughs> so I can toss stuff in here. And then I can just grab it, if I want, have it come out the bottom. There we go. A bunch of infused rock. Just like that. You know, I mean, it, it's pretty good. But... Let's continue on with that quest reading. Once applied to a staff, which spell dust, uh, in an imbuer, this spell will allow you to activate grove stones, charging them with natural energy to the point they cause plants to grow around them. This energy can then be siphoned by a fey crafter for further developments requiring this energy. As such, the fey crafter must be placed close to the activated grove stone. Note, when casting a spell with a staff, the casting cost material must be stored in a component pouch. Da, da, da. So we need to make a Fey Crafter, a Grove Supplication Spell, and a Grove Stone activated, which we, we need to first make a Grove Stone, and then we need to activate it. And then we get Dandelion Winds, which is a, it's a fun spell. Uh, Grove Supplication is is okay. I mean, it's, it's a required spell, really, for you to progress in Roots. Um, but we're going to need some infused Horizonite ingots. Whoa, what? Nature's Aura. They're called infused Horizonite ingots? from nature's aura. That's really weird. <laughs> all right, wild roots, wooden stands, living wood. I think I've got most, if not all these. This this one here confuses me, but that's okay. Uh, the grove stone, oh boy. Fused rock slabs, infused rocks. That's not bad. Wild root, terra moss, and then the casting, and then the, the grove supplication spell is going to require petals, which is actually just a bunch of flowers. Um, wild root, ancient sapling, mossy holly stone, holy stone, excuse me, 
And a rune of spring. Ooh. All right, that'll actually cost a bit, but I mean, it is a required spell. Once you have it, you're you're good to go from there. And then infused rocks, turquoise gemstone to get rune stones, which is those are those are actually really pretty crafting material. Um, so that's what we're going to be working on today. Uh, now that I've already gotten through a lot of the stuff that I was working up for myself, we're going to work on this for quest progression. So first and foremost, let's get some infused horizonite gets. And there we go, I now have the Fey Crafter, which is the first of the three steps that I need to complete. And there is the next part, the Grove Stone. And now for the probably the most complex part of it, it's going to be Grove Supplication because it requires a Rune of Spring. Um, I think Mossy Holy, Holy Stone I should be able to make, I think, if I don't already have some. So I'll be right back. Right, well that was actually a lot simpler than I thought it would be. If only because um, I already had water and uh, water and fire runes that made things a lot simpler. <laughs> now to just grab the last things here. That ancient sapling kind of scares me. Um, oh, I could do this just with a dirt bucket. So I think I've got a dirt bucket. I do. We'll grab that. Okay, and here's a word of warning. Don't have anything in your offhand when you access a mortar. Because <laughs> you may end up just accidentally putting it in there, um, whether you want to or not. Put that in there and one of these. There we go. Grove supplication. Yes, please. I can put that back in. And then I can put the shield back on. Okay. That's much better. And I have some extra petals left. I think I'm just going to put them in here because I just used some flowers. And I need to take these over there. Oh, I need to put this on my staff, but I've, I think my imbuer is over here. I also, in case you didn't notice, I removed the chains in between the here. This way I can I can fly a little freer <laughs> to get over here. Oh, and I've got ironberry seeds. Nah. I need to do something about that over here too. Here we go, imbuer. So I put this down, click this, put it on my wand, or my staff rather. I think it'll just add to it. I, it should not overwrite it. Probably should have tried checking that out first. <laughs> Might have been useful. Uh, but let's see. Can I... Growth infusion. Growth supplication. All right. Yes. Okay, good. So just shift clicking rotates through them. And let's see. I need a grove stone. We can put that down. I think just putting it down over here uh, makes the most sense to me. And then we can put the fey crafter right next to it. And then we just kind of cast the spell really there we are completed i can put this back in here for now actually i'm going to switch it out to the other spell before putting it away there we go and i still and i got the dandelion winds which i can also add on here i think this thing has three slots on it i can't remember actually but we can put this on here we can mess around with some dandelion winds which would be fun i think that just pushes enemies away in a circle around you can't remember what it uses though. It'll probably tell me once I've uh, infused it onto the staff. There we go. And if I look here, cloud berries. Okay, so that's not even going to work currently until I make some cloud berries, which I'm pretty sure that that's up and coming. But there we are. That that was actually a lot 
easier than I thought it would be, thankfully. And we got all that stuff done. So let's come back and friends on the other side and upmarket trimming. I think I'm going to go for upmarket trimming because I know where friends on the other side is going, looking at this image here. Upmarket trimming. By imbuing the natural energy of a fey crafter into some mundane shears with runestone, you get a magically attuned pair which can fundamentally alter some materials as they are harvested. This allows you to obtain a couple of new herbs. For now, the most important is the spirit herb. So we need to make some runic shears and collect spirit herbs. Uh, let's see. So I already have the shears up here. Let's actually take these things off of here for now. I need to make this, which I'm fake crafting is regular shears, two pereskias, and two rune stones, which actually at rune stone, turquoise, and four infused rocks. All right. So let's grab turquoise. One, two, three, four. And that was on, on a fake crafter. Okay. I have to admit, it's been a while since I've used this thing. I didn't I didn't remember that it actually used. Oh, there we go. Gotcha. Yep. And I don't... Oh, is it the knife? I need to make a knife. I don't think I have one. Or do I? And I ended up... I thought I made... Yeah, I've got an amethyst knife. Of course. Which I think I probably need to keep down at this end since I'm going to be using it here. I think... Oh, hey, there we go. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I got some runestone. Now I just need some regular shears and two Pereskia uh, plants, which I've got a couple here. Do I have any repaired? No, I've got mana steel shears. So that's not a problem. I can make some more. No biggie. There we go. I just need to land here. No regular shears in here, so I will just make some. I have... Plenty of iron at this point, or at least I feel comfortable with the amount that I have at the moment, thanks to uh, Al Stays Home over here, which, by the way, how you doing? <laughs> Another 131. You're, you're, doing, you're doing good work, kiddo. Thank you. Okay, so then we need to put these two plus... Wait, what am I missing? Oh, the shears and those? I think that's it, right? So we'll do this. These, I don't even know if this is the order it needs to be in or not, but... And there's the doorbell again. Doggone it. I'm never going to get this recording done today. Anyway, <laughs> I've got some iron berries. Runic shears. Oh, look at that. Minus 15% dig speed and attack speed. That's great. I don't, I don't like that being on any of my tools. <laughs> so I just feel the need to make it positive, positive, positive. Come on. There we go. Keen. That I just don't want it to have negatives. Thank you. <laughs> like this amethyst knife it, it doesn't need to be short there we go I don't care about attack damage I just don't want it to have negatives on its normal use so okay now the runic shears right click a block or entity to attempt to collect a fey gift sneak right click an entity to attempt to extract its life essence um that that's hmm that's I think the right click of the the Fey Gift is, is a much more appropriate thing. I've got some cows over here. Probably should be... Uh... Oh, wait, can I... You... Hey! I forgot I can get wild wheat. Oh, that's so much better than regular wheat. Um, but that's going to make things difficult for, for harvesting regular wheat. I need to keep some of this for the cows. There you go. You two make, make more cows. And you two. Make more cows, because I'm going to need it. <laughs> hey, Cell Pro, how's it going in there? You, you hanging in? Look at all this junk I'm getting already. All right, Runic Shears. So if I use it on a cow, I can get Fey Leather, which is going to have lots of uses besides leather pants. Wait, what? Really? This is the recipe for leather pants? I'm guessing JEI is messed up with that somehow. But, <laughs> like, I think you can use regular leather as well uh, in any of these recipes. Yeah, probably. So that's not really going to tell me much of what it can be used for, except for bewitchment stuff. That makes more sense. Huh. That is very curious at this point. But what about fake crafting? Yeah, you can make the Sylvan stuff. If you make the Sylvan armor set, it's not going to be as protective. It's like more uh, an iron armor set. But it will give you severe discounts to your um, the, the casting cost of any of the Roots magic staff spells. 
Uh, so like this is 0.1250. It, it might be like 50% less or something like that, you know, or, or just a percentage less. But either way, it's really good. So let's grab another one from this one. And let's, um, come here. I just grabbed your life essence. What What is this? Life essence of cow uses 5-5. Five, five, obtained with runic shears. What? And I can also get fey leather from it. You can only do it once, though. So the, this is why you need to have more critters around. And in fact, come here. Uh, where's the other cow? Come here. I need to, I need to get that from you. A little bit of your life essence too, because why why not? Uh, apparently, I can get them both. See, the weird thing is this this is roots. Okay, life essence of cow. So I have cow essence. <laughs> I feel I feel very naughty with this um, for some reason, but I'm going to grab a whole bunch of these herbs, put them in here. The wild wheat. This is good stuff because you can use it to make wild wheat bread. Let's look at that. It's three and a half uh, hunger, four and a half saturation. What is this? Three and a half, four and a half. So it's the equivalent of venison. It allows you to have a steak-like item with uh, so therefore you don't have to have killed anything. It's it's a peaceful solution. So, I think that completes that quest, if I'm not mistaken. I should have Rampant Growth spell. No, I, I don't. Why not? What did I, Oh, the Spirit Herbs. I forgot. Let's make Spirit Herbs. Oh, I just need to harvest a Beetroot. Okay, that shouldn't be a problem. In the meantime, I'm going to eat my non-vegetarian foods. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Uh, beetroot. There we go. And then I get spirit herbs, which this is great. I can... That's unacceptable. I, I, can, I cannot have this. Let's grab this so that I can have beetroot seeds that I can replace. Grab this. And then I can fix this, because this is just unacceptable. No. Cannot have. There we go. <laughs> I need to get one of those stones that allows me to tread things uh, in here. I didn't think that I'd be able to do that. Um, with the uh, the fire with the with the wings on. There we go. And these are still beetroots, by the way. This is just allowing me to harvest spirit herbs, which is great. Uh, put those in there. I don't think wild wheat. I don't think counts as an herb, does it? Spell cost. Oh, oh. Okay, so it is an herb that I can use for spell cost. Okay. N now I know. The, the more you know. We're going to put this in here for now. Sugarcane seeds. I don't really care about those. Putting all that stuff back in there because I know that this is pretty much the, the, the farming stuff. And I'm going to keep these things for now because I still don't know what these are used for. But I've got 20 uses now from a cow. And I've got the rampant growth. That's, that's good. Put that there. Okay. Next in the list. Yep. Got that. Offering to the gods and friends on the other side. Let's do the offering to the gods. With spirit herb, you have all the ingredients required for the ritual of wildwood growth. This ritual causes nearby wild root plants to undergo intense growth into a large tree. The wood from this tree is the last thing we need to create an offering table, upon which we can make offerings to the gods in exchange for more divine materials. Okay. R ritual of wildwood growth. Interesting. Wild root must be planted nearby and fully grown. <clears throat> okay, I can do that. Oh, so this is the ritual for it. Okay, all right. So we need to do a ritual on the pyre for this stuff, uh, which actually I will need to get rid of this. <laughs> what are these used for? I have no idea. Oh, creature summoning. Oh, oh, neat. Okay. Wait, can I some, on some kind of... Okay, I see this thing now. If I, if I look up roots, uh, there is a specific item. No, it's not the structure marker. It is this, the offering plate. So I wonder if I can summon more critters with this. That would be interesting. <laughs> I can repair it. <laughs> okay. Good to know. So I think I'm going to put that in here for the moment. And then we can check it out in the future. In the meantime, I've got mob drops. And I've got this rampant growth spell, which I don't 
I don't know that my staff can hold any more magics. Is it? Oh, it can hold five. So yeah, definitely it can hold more magics. And rampant growth is really good. Recipe for that isn't too bad. It's just like any sapling, really. Yeah. I think rampant growth helps grow things in an area. Oh, look at this. It's already growing grass. I'm going to need to put down a bunch of those um, Batania flowers just to stop this from growing stuff that I don't want there. <laughs> All right, so let's see. The, um, the thing that we're going to need next is here, Pyre Ritual for Wild Root or Wildwood Growth. Uh, growth. There it is. We need this, uh, which is going to be some bark. Looks like any bark plus dark oak and wild root and spirit herbs. Okay, fair enough. Now, in order to get those barks, um, I'm going to need that knife that I put away. But that's all right, because I've got a few things over here that I can use for that too. So let's grab this amethyst knife, put that up there. And it needed, was it? Oh, it looks like any of these. Oh, but it, a dark oak is needed. Okay, so let's take a look here and see if we have any dark dark oak acorns. I can click there, and it shows me like this little spaghetti string going to a chest saying it's right in here, and that I can open it and find the item and the spaghetti the spaghetti item. See, it even highlights it. Will go away, or if it's in multiple ones like this, uh, I'll just choose this. If it's in there. And I, I'm like, no, I don't, I don't want to click on that. I, it's done. You can go in here and you can hit end tracking, and the spaghetti string will go away. Same thing with the with the paper that's in your inventory. But there we go. It is now in here. I can make some dark oak, and I can put this down somewhere. I might just put this down out there because I'm going to need it anyway. We can grow it there, I guess. Grab this. We're going to do growth infusion. Oh yeah, that only works for the first tick, and then it's done after that. Um, do I have any... I do! Yay! Okay. So we can grow this up. I don't know if this is really going to work. I've not tried um, using Amethyst Knife on this Dynamic Dark Oak Tree. But it's got 43 logs, so that's fine, because what I can do is knock it down, get the logs, put the logs down, and then use the knife on the logs. So that should work. There we go. And then I put this down. And then I can use the knife on this. Oh, is it just chopping it? Yeah, just chopping it apparently works. wonder if this would have worked if I had chopped the dynamic tree down. I didn't try that, but either way, this works just fine. I now have plenty of dark oak bark, which I could just use a bunch of that instead, because it said uh, one of dark oak and two of something else, any of the other barks. Okay, and then spirit herb and wild root, which I've got them. I just don't have them pulled out. Spirit herb, oops, and wild root. There we go, and there. And it even shows you right here, there's the, there's the ritual it's going to do, but I don't want to start it yet. <laughs> It's especially important that I don't start this yet uh, because here, I'm going to put this here for now. Um, the uh, I need to grow some wild root, which means I need. Oh, do I even have? I don't have a hoe in here. Of all the tools I have, I don't have a hoe. Well, I know where I can get one because I've already got one made. It's sitting right here. So I'll just take this one. Probably need to just keep this tool on me at this point because I just keep on needing it. But if I plunk this down and I grab a piece of wild root, just need these all over the place. Oops, I can't switch them while I've got it open. So here, there, and then I need to grow it. So let's do this. You don't have enough terra moss in your component pouch. What did I? Oh, it's because it's not on my hot bar. There we go. Yeah, I've got plenty of terra moss. All right, so. Grow. What? It says it's growing. It's just growing very slowly. Come on, you can do it. Okay. That was a lot more effort than I thought it would be. 
feel like I got drained in that process. All right, and light it. That should work. Should turn into some sort of tree. I hope these trees don't interfere. It is a little bit close. It, are you do? Are you gonna do the thing? Plus, wildwood seeds. Oh, oh. Okay, I think that's what I needed. Uh, wild root must be planted nearby and fully grown. Then fey crafting to get a spirit of calling. But hold on a second. It said. Hard for the ritual of wildwood growth. This ritual causes nearby wildwood plants to undergo intensive growth into a large tree. The wood from this tree is the last thing we need to create an offering table. So I guess I need to grow this at this point. Uh, let's see if I can actually... Yeah, I didn't think so because I'm... I can't... I can't step on this with my wings on. There we go. <laughs> that should work. And then I can put this away. In fact, I've got a whole bunch of stuff I need to put away. Look at all this junk in my inventory. But I've got some wildwood seeds. Let's try putting one down. I'll put it out in a little bit more open of an area. Maybe it'll actually drape over the edge here. That might be cool. Take some of the bone meal. And try growing this. It looks like a dynamic wildwood tree. Okay. Looks pretty good so far. Can I get some roots on this thing? It, it has to be thematic with, with the mod, please. There we go roots <laughs> I like it it's very handsome colors I like it's much much richer colors here nice okay so now we take it down <laughs> and I grab as much of this as I can without getting hit by the tree hopefully and I got wildwood logs all right cool can I do what can I do with this oh it's gonna show me everything in the world Girdle of the Dryads. This belt protects the wearer from harm by growing pieces of bark as armor. Oh, that's Bewitchment. I remember that. <laughs> All right. Uh, then a whole bunch of regular wood recipes. But I don't really see too much in here that isn't normal, short of what it was talking about in the book. So, uh, wood from this tree is the last thing we need to create the off on the offering table. Okay. Oh, there it is. Wildwood logs are needed for this in the uh, crafting altar. Oh, I need cloudberries. And a token of fear, which I have one. Okay, that's not bad. So I'm going to clean up my inventory. Then, I, oh, I've got silkworms. <gasps> Hold on a second, folks. Hold on. Before I clean up my inventory and we, we progress with this, we, we need to set this up. I need, I just need a hopper. Uh, let's grab some iron ingots. One, two, three, four, five. If you're not familiar with uh, silkworms, they're cool. You don't need very many at all. Um, but I do need a chest. Grab this here, and then I should be able to just craft it, right? I'm just making an, a hopper to collect the goods from the silkworms. There we go. I have nine silkworms. You don't need nine silkworms. Let me tell you that right now. At most, you probably just need one. I'm, I'm going to click down a couple because uh, I already have 548 strings, so I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> but... I also need a place to keep it. So let's make it in a place where we can see it. I'm going to want a little bit more man glass. Do we have any glass in here? We've got some glass in here. One, two, three, four. And I could toss this in a pool of mana just to get a little bit more. And where would be a good spot to have this? I think we could probably have it over here on the outside edge feeding into the, uh, the mob drop chest. That might be good, uh, but let's, let's see about this. If I have this going into the edge, this is kind of crazy here, um, like so. And then I've got some glass on either side. And then I'll need a temporary piece, uh, something to butt this up against. Now here's the thing, uh, the, the silkworms themselves will likely try climbing up and over one block areas uh like because they will walk around but otherwise did that did that one just die am i not getting any is this bad for them little little silkworms oh there we go i got one so i just got a little bit lucky i guess i only get one but that's all right uh, it'll grow up to be big and strong and then over time it will drop like silk or string, I think. 
Let's let's see here. Uh, silk. Yep, it'll drop silk cocoons and silk threads and stuff. And these cocoons can be used with a spindle to make more silk thread than you would just by uh, putting them in a, a crafting table and getting silk thread. And a spindle, of course, is, is not really expensive at all. But then the use of this is to make silk thread. You can use that to make just about everything you can with regular string. So it's it's really useful. And I figure we'll we'll keep that one there for now. It's rather inobtrusive. We can check in on it on occasion. Maybe I'll even name it one of the patrons or something instead of Silkworm. That might be interesting. <laughs> but I'm going to clear out my inventory, as I was saying. Uh, and then we'll be back with uh, probably crafting up the offering table, uh, making an offering to the gods. Um, you know what? Maybe we'll do this next time. Because I think what I'd like is a better area. I'm going to need to move these probably over there or something. I might move them over there. I don't know, because I think we're going to need this big open space for the offering of the gods. And I think that these might be a little close. I might have to move them further back or something. But I will plan this out, and we'll have this set up. Oh, I don't, I don't, have, I don't have visibility. There we go. And we'll have this set up for next time. Um, I know that there wasn't a lot of exploration today. It's a lot of just a little experimentation with some of the stuff and a little bit of quest progression. I'm enjoying this pack so much. I hope you guys enjoy it as well. If so, be sure to let me know in the comments. Uh, also, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell. Come visit us on Twitch and help spread the mischief. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.